In this video I'm going to show you how to create a link server from your traditional on-premises SQL server to an Azure SQL database. So here I am in SQL Server Management Studio. I'm connected to my local SQL server which is on my local laptop here in an instance called SQL 2017. And just for reference this is the Azure SQL database that we'll be connecting to. Now many people will simply try to create a linked server using the SQL Server option. So let's give that a go. So if I click on a new linked server and I click on SQL Server and then I simply enter the name of my Azure SQL instance. So let me paste in the name of that particular instance. For security, I need to put in the name that I'm going to connect to. So I'm going to connect using a SQL MySQL login. Click OK. And that now works. So I can test my connection and it says successful. But if I try and open up AdventureWorks and click on tables, it fails with an error saying that it can't connect. Unfortunately, you are not able to connect to an Azure SQL Server using the standard SQL Server data provider. It doesn't work. So let me open up my link server query. If I try and actually run a select statement against my Azure SQL database, it also comes back with a message saying that this is not supported in this version of SQL Server. So we cannot use a traditional SQL Server link server to connect to an Azure SQL database. We need to find a different way to do this. And the way to do it is to use ODBC. So what I'm going to do is create an ODBC connection. So let me come over here and open up the ODBC data source and I'm going to create a system data source. So let me click add. I'm going to use the SQL Server native client version 11. I have tried some of the other SQL Server clients and they all seem to be quite happy to work. So first of all we need a name Unfortunately, I'm going to copy this from my screen. So we're going to call it AdventureWorks. And the server name is my QED server name. I now need to go to Next. What is the SQL Server authentication I'm going to use? So I'm going to use my Postly DM account again. Next. Now I'm going to select a default database. I've had problems if I haven't put a default database in there. So I'm going to select AdventureWorks 2012 as my default database. Everything else can stay as is. Click Finish. Test the data source. Successful. And click OK. So now we have our ODBC data source called AdventureWorks Azure. So let's close that down because we don't need any more. Now we need to configure a new link server. So let me right click and click New Link Server. And we need to give the link server a name. So I'm going to call it Azure. A W. The provider now will be the one called OLEDB provider for ODBC. And the product name and the data source I'm going to set to that ODBC data source, which is called AdventureWorks Azure. So let me put that into the product name and the data source and the catalog. 
let's put in AdventureWorks 2012 database. Security, again, I need to put in my remote login. So I'll put in my POSTLEDM login. Server options, we can leave those all as they are. So let's click OK. And if I right click on Azure W and test the connection, we have succeeded. Obviously, we could do this through code, and I have various examples there. So let's run a query and let's see now whether we can pull data from Azure. And there we go. We have managed to connect our on premises SQL Server to an Azure SQL database using an ODBC data source. This query was using the open query command. If we try and use the dotted notation to talk directly to an Azure database, this will actually fail. And it will come back with and it will come back with an error saying that we have in, inconsistent metadata for a column. And we will get a similar error if we tried running this particular query from the person.address column. Okay, so the reason it is failing is in the first query there is a user defined data type and in the second query a geospatial column and that doesn't seem to work unless you use the open query command. But if we query a table which doesn't have any of those types of column, in this case the person phone column, then we do get data back. So do watch out for errors like that. So let me change to my AdventureWorks 2016 database. So if I want to copy data from Azure to my local database, then that will run no trouble at all. And I've now brought some data over. So there is no problem running queries that way. I can also copy data from my local database to Azure as well. Let me just delete the table if it exists, which it does. So here I'm going to insert some rows into a table called person temp in my AdventureWorks 2012 database. And now I can have a look at those rows. Now if we try running a store procedure, so I have a store procedure called insert 10 into person temp, this will actually fail because we're not configured for RPC. If we go back to our link server and right click, go to properties and come down to server options, we have this option here called RPC out. And we need to set that to true. And now if we run our store procedure in our Azure SQL database, it works perfectly well. So if you're intending to run store procedures using from your local database to Azure, you need to make sure that RPC out option is enabled. I hope that has been useful to you. Please visit my YouTube channel to see more clips on using Microsoft Azure SQL databases and other SQL presentations. And you can download my free ebook from gethinellis.com. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope to see you later.